Welcome back guys, this is going to be our first official video of Bear Claw Survival. Um, make sure to follow, subscribe, we are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, and you can check us out at Podcast City Network as well. Um, today we're going to go over, we have an item of the week, we're going to go over an outdoor tip of the week, and then we're going to go into a bag discussion that's basically, basically going to break down a 24 hour bag versus a 72 hour bag. Um, we're going to be using my personal bag that I've put together that's kind of a combination between the two. Um, it's kind of set up for longer period, but it is what I consider my get home bag is what the technical definition of it is going to be. Um, so the first thing we're going to go over is the item of the week, which Cody has. So our very first Bear Claw Survival item of the week is brought to you by Koglens. This is the Commando Saw. You can see here, get in the focus. So what this saw is, is pretty much a kind of metal teethed rope with two hand straps. You don't rip your hands open. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can kind of see the best you can, like how little tiny little teeth on this wire. So you may ask yourself, well, what would I need this for? Well, for instance, you need to cut some firewood. You don't feel like having an ax with you, maybe too big to carry around. Maybe your backpack's full. You forgot the hatchet. Weight, weight plays a factor in all of this as well. Um, we, that will drop down significantly. Especially if you're going to be walking long distances too, weight is a huge factor. So this wire and strap, I mean, weighs almost nothing. So you need to cut some firewood, put this on, start sawing. Let's just say, for instance, you're trying to build some sort of shelter system. And you need to trim up some wood to be able to you know, make some decent poles to stick in the ground to you know use to hold your tarp up or whatever you have for shelter. Perfect item right here. You know, just a quick little saw. Cuts pretty good. Um, we went online and researched some similar products for you as well, just in case you know you wanted something maybe a little bit more heavier duty or something a little more different. So we came up with three items here. Brady, tell us uh, what we found here. So like Cody said, the first one is from a company called Koglin's Command Saw. It's 20 inches in length. It retails about $4.82. Um, and we actually picked that up at Walmart. Um, like Cody said, we did go on to other various sites, find similar products um, that all vary in price and make and size. Uh, the next one we found on was on Amazon. It's called SOS Gear Pocket Chain Saw. It's 24 inches in length. It retails for about $14.95 on Amazon. And that one has about, about what, seven, eight, about seven eight or eight teeth, teeth on it. Um, and I think yeah. that one actually is not the serrated wire like you see on this. That's no. actually a chainsaw blade. Um, mm. The other one is by selfrelianceoutfitters.com. Um, that one is called the Nordic Pocket Saw. It is 25.6 inches in length, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. Uh, retails for about $42. It's on the higher side. Um, but, but it, it's an actual chainsaw blade. It has about 33 teeth on it. Yeah, so it's 32 yeah. teeth. Um, it looks like it's got a little bit more weight to it, but depending on terrain, where you might end up or where you mm -hmm. might not want to end up, um, it's going to vary of what you actually want. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is you know you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. So obviously with this... Mm -hmm. Five dollars. You're only going to be would... able to cut something so thick. I mean, it's going to take a while. Right. I mean, to cut something bigger or thicker. I mean, it may even, you know, you cut something too thick, it may end up breaking. So, you know, depending your environment too. If you're in more of like a heavily wooded forest, I probably go with the more expensive heavier duty versus you know this wire, which may be for somewhere that maybe has some like thinner trees, bushes, stuff. Um, I mean, honestly, I mean, you could probably even, you know, with the size of them, do both. One for, like, bigger logs, one for smaller things. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have, you know, one of each just in case. Yeah. Especially if you're talking at least, you know, 72 hours or more out in the woods. You never know, like, what you're going to need. Or just in general camping as well. Um, mm -hmm. For people that don't want to carry, you know, big giant hatchets or um, fixed blade saws or anything like that. Um, this actually, I was surprised. Um, I've seen them at Walmart quite a few times, and it does wrap up to about probably an inch and a half, two inches in diameter. I mean, you can tuck that in your pocket if need be, or even just in a little case of something else. Well, mean, some of the more expensive ones do come with actual cases too as well to kind of conceal the blades so you're not like cutting yourself up, you know, right. them in your pocket or anything. Yeah, they're the 
basically, um, I hate to use the word Velcro, but fabric mesh uh, pockets. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing about those is that most of those come with a either horizontal or vertical strap on there that you can put on a belt loop or anything like that. Yep. Um, but they make binders that actually go on the back of the backpacks where you can just hang it. Um, again, consideration, weight, you know, what you want to get wet, what you don't want to get wet, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm definitely a big believer in using your space mm -hmm. adequately and having enough resources basically to get you through what you need to do. So cool. right now I think we're going to cut to the product testing. We're going to step outside. We're actually going to mm -hmm. cut. We have a little teeny tiny stick that here. we found. Yeah, um, something not too big. I mean, just something to try it out, see how well it cuts. I mean, we're not going to, you know, go for the full Monty here and, you know, do like a tree log. But we'll show you guys know how it works. And so here we go. All right, we're going to do our product testing now. Um, like Cody said, when we were giving a description of this, it does come with little things to put your wrist in so you don't end up having to hold the wire or do anything like that. Um, like I said, we've just got this kind of this little teeny tiny stick we're going to do on a little small test. There we go. And what we found with this is wider strokes or longer strokes necessarily work a lot better with this. But um, as far as effectiveness, it gets the job pretty much done. Um, now, not... Okay, that's okay. So you may have to take it out when you get a little too deep. Start from the other side. It's saw. I mean, there you go. So ideally, basically something like that, you know, you would be able to snap it in half. Pretty um, clean cut. So, like I said, guys, this is just a preview, basically, just to show you what this thing can do. Um, obviously, you get a bigger one, a more dirty, more durable, sturdy, sturdy durable. one. Uh, you can cut through much larger things. Um, but where we are, we're not obviously out in the middle of the woods right now, and we're using what we have readily available that we found in front of my apartment. So, this week's outdoor survival tip, or should I say tips that I got, can be used by pretty much anything from beginner to advanced. Not really too complicated. We're going to start out simple, um, just you know, because we have a lot of people that may have never had any kind of camping or outdoor experience before. So the first tip that we have here is about food. So let's say you are out in the woods for an extended period of time. Even if you're camping, you're hungry, you need food. So let's say you go out and you catch a fish, or maybe you trap a small animal, rabbit, squirrel, whatever you need. One of the things that people do not realize is that you should never clean your food by your campsite. The reason is, is because there are certain types of predators that can smell there's animal entrails and meats from long distances away. Last thing you want is to attract a bear or some wolves, coyotes, whatever around your campsite. So always remember that whenever you catch your food, make sure that you clean it away from your campsite. I would say maybe, maybe a good quarter mile maybe or so, just because, you know, if you're cooking it, you're going to be able to smell it too. So well, a good quarter mile is a good distance. Bring your food back to your campsite, cook it, and then when you're done with your food, you know you're absolutely done eating, take your food and put it away from your campsite. Because even after you're done eating, like, you, know, you leave your food out, or let's say you store it somewhere, animals are still going to be able to smell that. So the lesson here is distance yourself from your food when cleaning, separating it, you know, and after you're done eating. Our second tip here is a very important one. You're out in the wilderness. First thing you're gonna to need to do, find water. Water is essential to keep yourself hydrated and keep yourself alive. Most people don't know how to find water. I got two tips here that are very simple that anybody can follow to help find water. The biggest tip I have is to look at your surroundings and listen to nature and watch nature because nature will give you the signs on where water is, okay? So the first tip I have here is bees, okay? So if you can spot bees, it's a good sign. A, because you have a hive, which means honey, possible food, but also bees are usually found within four to five miles from water. So if you see a lot of bees, you know there's probably some sort of water source around. 
The second are birds, especially if you see wild finches or pigeons. Now, you may not have to be an expert bird person to know what a pigeon looks like or a finch, but birds in general, because birds usually eat grain, and grain is usually found near water. So if you see a lot of birds in an area, you know there's got to be a water source around nearby. So, like I said, just look, watch your surroundings, you know, watch nature, because nature will give you hints on where stuff is, like water, for instance. You just have to just look. It can be a situation to where you may be in a panic, but you always got to remember just to calm, breathe, and just know your surroundings. These are our survival tips of the week. All right, guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the difference between a 72-hour and a 24-hour bag. Um, like I said, we're going to use mine today for uh, all intents and purposes. Mine's kind of set up for both. Um, so explain to people that don't know what the difference between a 24-hour bag and a 72-hour bag is and what it may consist of. So your 24-hour bag basically is your... GHB for short, it's called a get home bag. Um, it is a bag that you would pack to carry in uh, your car, carry with you on maybe not a daily basis, but on road trips, things like that. Um, it's supposed to last you anywhere from 24 to 72 hours to get you back to where you need to be or to get you home to get your larger bag. Um, so mine is kind of set up, like I said, in between a little bit. Um, it's set up right now for a single person use. Um, I would recommend everyone setting up their own just because everyone's needs are going to be a little bit different um, unless you do have a spouse or children that you want to set up a large one for um, by all means do what you need to do necessary um, to be prepared for whatever um, so mine i have a pair of gloves in my bag but i also carry um, another pair of gloves with me um, <clears throat> and we'll just take this off and get right into it now, so, now, now, let me ask you this though. Okay, do you um, you have a backpack on? Is there any other options that, besides a backpack? So let's say like somebody that may have, you know, maybe not want to carry something on their back. I mean, you could, by you, all could, means could you, you use maybe use a, a, a duffel bag. Because I mean, you could use a duffel bag. Um, for I mean, me, you could fit quite a bit of stuff in this thing. I mean, it's got side pouches. I mean, you figure you got a you know handle or a strap here. I mean, you could easily pack some stuff in there, you know, get out of your trunk. Cody's a big fan of the duffel bag and shoulder bag industry. Um, I mean, to be honest, you know, a duffel bag, you know, most people are like, well, I would have a backpack. Well, I mean, I can still, you know, pretty much carry. I don't think they saw what that actually was. I mean... I can still carry pretty well, you know. So you know what I'm saying? My duffel bag's just as good as a backpack here. So as valid as your I point mean, is, for seventy two I mean, hours I'm not carrying my <laughs> macaroni with me to get home. Um, you never know. You know, it's just not something you never know. that I would you never know carry on a daily basis. Um, you never know. but it's funny as hell that it fits in a duffel bag. I know, right? And and a All right, so, well, I mean, you so, could use a duffel bag, but today Brady's got a backpack here that he's going to show off here and show off his little goodies and stuff and everything. All right, us. so I'll just decide we'll put the micro running down for now. I mean, um, come on now. I mean, it comes down to it. I mean, you know, two guys fighting over water, who's going to win? Well, yeah, I've got a three theory on that. Okay, so exteriorly. Exteriorly? Is that a word? Exterior. Yeah, we'll go with it. Okay, sure. Okay, so yeah. for the Outside. exterior of my bag, yep, um, basically what I carry is a all-purpose knife, um, which is a my eyes a must for any bag that you put together or anyone that carries anything on a daily basis. I carry a knife on a daily basis. Um, this is one I picked up at a gun show. It's lightweight. It's actually got some paracord on it. It's got some rigid teeth here on the back. Um, it has been sharpened quite a bit, um, and all around, this is just the knife that I picked to go in this bag. Um, next thing is more paracord. Um, this stuff is so universal, you can do so much with it, that it's, again, in my eyes, a necessity to have. Um, I probably will not build a bag without this. 
Um, this is probably somewhere between 25 and 50 feet. Um, if you want to carry more, by all means, carry more. Um, you can use this stuff to tie together branches, to make shelter, to pull things, to hold things together, whatever. Anything you can think of with rope. Um, this is the way to go. Again, lightweight. It's not too heavy. Um, keep it wound up pretty well, and it's easy to just wind back up. And a little suggestion here, because we're talking a lot about like wooded areas. If, if you were actually caught in a situation in like a city, um, you know, I would probably recommend trying to get out of the city as quick as you can. We're well because in this case right now that we're talking about seventy two hour back. So we're trying to get home. So if you're in a city and you live in the city, by all means do not leave the city. I think that's jumping a little bit too much forward. Um uh, you know, to be honest, I mean I think it'd be a little bit harder to get in and out of a city. That's why I would probably suggest maybe, you know, yeah, get home if you can, get your necessities, and then get out, I would say. Right. Um, by all means, you do what you have to do. Um, but like I said, my 72-hour bag is set up to get me home to get to my bigger bag. Um, because obviously there are much bigger bags you can carry than this mm -hmm. um, that have a lot more supplies that are going to last you a lot longer. Um Hand sanitizer, great thing to have anywhere. Gloves, um, these are just medical gloves, thin for first aid, whatever you need. Um, again, I felt like this was a necessity to have, uh, especially with cleanliness and not knowing what you're gonna actually get into. Actually, we'll pull all this out and just pack it all back in together. Um, on this side, this is actually a water filtration bottle that I got out of a 72 hour dry food box that I bought. I believe I got it from Walmart. Um, I think the whole kit was 50 bucks, somewhere around there. Yeah, um, not been used. Um, it does have a seal on the bottom that you pull that off and that's how you start filtrating your water. Um, I've left the instructions and everything in there until it's ready to use. Um, and I, water's a necessity. So to me, this is again, another thing that is a must have. Oh, let's see. Um, this is another thing I picked up. It's relatively cool. Um, utensils, eating, eating utensils. Um, but there is a fork, spoon, corkscrew, bottle opener, um, a nail filer, and a knife on the end of this um, can never carry too many knives. Um, and this is actually really cool because you put it together and then once you fold everything back inside, that actually holds everything in place. Um, so to me, I can wash this off. I have something to eat with. I'm not sitting there picking it at my hands all the time. Um, and again, it's not very heavy. It's lightweight and it just works. All right. So we'll get into this real quick. The bag. Well, flashlight, um, this is a flashlight that's made by Slide, or actually, no, it's made by Nebo, I believe. It's called um, the Slide. It's called the Slide. The electric Slide, look at that. So, this one actually has several modes, um, and I can obviously, you know, zoom in and out on this. Um, it's got several different settings. Oh, wait, no, settings are on the side. So, it slides open, and then you have a more broader perimeter light red light, and then a flashing, flashing red light. This runs on four AAA batteries, which Jeez. is great. Um, there's also a magnet on the back of this. Um, I don't know if I have anything here. Let me see. There you go. Um, there you go. No, this bitch right there. So if the door was more oh, nice. the other way, it will hang right there. Um, open up your light, stick it, mm. if it was more metal, but. More metal. <laughs> um, How much more metal do you have to be? And I keep my flashlight right where I can grab it, not in the bag, on the shoulder strap. I can just reach out, pull it out. Mm. Um, let's, go on, let's, go, let's go on the main little, little pouch there in the bag. Let's get done with this. I have two Sharpies. Um, I keep two Sharpies just in case I have to write anything down, time, well, time date, um, or, you know, when you're doing uh, things that's Dressing, dressing changes, um, you want to keep those fresh, so you put the date on when you did them or the time, whichever you prefer. Girl's phone number when you pass by. Yeah, in the middle of, you know, shit hitting the fan. Um, so, we're going to do this first pocket here. 
this is a little thing that you can pick up just about anywhere. I actually think I even picked this one up at the flea market just because it was a dollar and I just needed to have it. Um, it's great. Little shovel. It's got some teeth on it and it folds up into itself and collapses and goes right back in the pouch. So it does have some weight to it, um, but as far as being able to dig up, I have to. I don't have to use my hands um, to dig in the dirt. I have that and I just saw it as a necessity again. Um, Stormproof, windproof, waterproof matches. Whatever bag you build. Water, heat, Storms. Well, that's what I, not what I was getting <laughs> at, but water and heat. Are Everything that will keep your matches from rotting, pretty much. You need to make sure you have matches that can withstand anything. I was going in a slightly different direction. Okay, sure. um, water and heat are two necessities in my mind. Um, so these are stormproof matches, windproof, waterproof. Um, they are a heavier duty style match for sure. They're not thin. Um, they're still in the plastic. I've not even opened them. Um, most of my stuff in this has not even been opened. Um, it's just they're ready to go, but you can see that these are definitely thicker than normal matches, um, and I'm really hoping that they will hold up well, and uh, when we start putting these bags to the test, we will definitely find, find out. Um, fire starter. As another great thing, uh, if you are not in a place that has kindling or a stamp, um, this is a completely sealed plastic pouch that's not going to let water in. So again, this is another thing that I threw in there that I felt was great to have. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's also, just to mention too, it's um, no harmful chemicals in it. It's eco-friendly and smokeless, which means that you can also use it for cooking as well. Shit's hitting the fan. I don't know that how concerned I am about anything being eco-friendly, but well, that's I'm, what I'm saying. I mean, um, I mean, you don't want to poison yourself with something, you know, while you're cooking your food. Well, a Gerber is great. Um, I have one, yeah, I got one in most of my bags. Um, again, can't have too many Niagara tools. All right, let's see what else I got in here. This is actually a great thing that I found. Um, this is a oh, heat trading cards. conductive warming blanket. It folds up into this. It's about inch and a half by two and a half, three inches. Fits right in my bag. I'm not going to unfold it because I will never get it folded back up. Um, so it's like a one-time use thing? If need be or if, by all means, if you want to try to fold it back up, go for it. I'm not going to unfold it right here in the, in the <laughs> middle of this. Um, but it... Uh, Basically, it keeps all your heat inside and you insulate yourself, which I think, for as light as this is, um, is a great, great tool to have. So let me slide this back in here real quick just so it doesn't... Unfold it. itself? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> all right. Um, compass, for sure. Um, you know how to read one? I know how to read a compass. Um, <laughs> Definitely a manual compass. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, I have my cell phone. Okay, cell phone towers go down. You don't have power. You don't have a compass. Manual compass, for sure. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here. All right, and that pretty much wraps up that pocket. So let's get to the bigger pocket. Purification tablets for water. Again, water is a necessity. So I have multiple ways to treat water to make it drinkable. Um, this comes with 50 tablets. Um, I want to say this was around 8 to 12 bucks. I think we got it at Walmart. Um, it's by Coleman. Um, again, have not used them still in the packaging. But we know an alternative, too, in case you don't have those, boil all your water. When you're cooking your food at night, get a, make sure you have a pot with you, boil up your water. By all means. Boil. Um, another set of gloves. Steam gloves. Um, I have used these gloves working on cars, working on bikes, working on anything, um, and they are great. I will stand by these gloves for anything. Um, I love them. They're not super expensive, um, and they will get the job done for sure. Uh, let's see. Basic first aid kit, one to two people. Um, let's see, I don't even know if I really haven't gotten into this yet either. Um, 
definitely a necessity. Um, gauze, whistle, a mini compass. Uh, there is some, let's see, ant bites, aspirin, acetaminophen, um, all types of good stuff in here. Um, tape, gauzing, a little pair of tweezers. Oh, that's cool. I didn't Jesus. know those were in there. Um, yeah. Bigger, this looks like a band aid. Band -aid. Um, tape, several forms of gauze, alcohol pads, I'm several sure. Um, antiseptic towels. Um, burn, blister, wound care. I actually even think there's a little book in here that goes over several stuff for people that are not um, burst and first aid or basic things like that. Um, and this is pretty lightweight. Um, I think it was 20 bucks I got this little one for. And actually there's a whole list in the back that has everything in it. Um, and again, first aid, I think in any bag is a necessity, whether it is a 72 hour bag or whether it's a get home bag or whether it's a multiple day bag. Um, just because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you might need. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, on a personal preference, don't mind a little bit more weight for things that I'm not saying I wishing that I had. Um, let's see. So again, with this being a 72 hour bag, there is not a whole lot in here. Um, okay. but I Am definitely I have, uh, some dry food. Uh, these are banana chips. This is out of a box that, like I said, I got from Walmart. Creamy chicken rice. Creamy chicken rice. We'll just see what the directions on this time. Remove oxygen absorber. Whisk entire contents into five cups of boiling water. Simmer on heat for 20 minutes. So, once again, you know, make sure you got the right cooking utensils, too. Maple brown sugar oatmeal, there you go. Yeah. And cheesy broccoli rice. So mm -hmm. more food. Um, the thing I'm missing out of this bag for sure though is definitely a, I don't know what I'd say, larger pot. Um, a pot? Yeah, a pot. I have one tucked away in another bag somewhere. Um, like I said, this is just a quick bag that we threw together for the video um, just to show how everything fits and flows. Um, let's see, the other thing I have is 50 rounds of Remington 380 ammunition, um, and I also have a small handgun that I carry in this bag as well, um, pro-gun, anti-gun, whatever your stand is, um, if you cannot tell by anything that's hanging in this room, um, extremely pro-gun, <laughs> um, they've been a tool for very long time um, and I personally would not have a bag without one in it. Um, now with that being said, this is not like a knife or first aid kit or anything like that. This is definitely something that you need to make sure that you know what's around you, um, who's around you, and where it is at all times. Um, I definitely would suggest the one with the safety. Um, for sure. Um, the other thing too, guys, is when you're looking into building your bags, whatever state you may be in or whatever, wherever you may be, um, make sure you are up to date with your state gun laws um, and if you need permitting to carry a gun. Um, that is definitely something that you need to look into for sure. Um, by all means, just so you don't get yourself in mm -hmm. a bind. Um, we live in the state of Florida. Me and Cody are pretty well versed in what we are legally allowed to do and what we legally are not allowed to do. Um, and that pretty much wraps up my bag. Um, right. So this is, like I said, it's a 72 hour bag. It's lightweight. Um, it's got a lot of attachments on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna grab my bigger bag real quick just to show you guys what a longer period bag would look like. This is what I would be getting home to get basically. Um, to go back oh, out with. This one. It's um, got the big black bag. So this, I will be able to put everything probably two or three times of what's in this bag in this one. Um, and this one will be at some point filled up when we get to that point um, and break it down more. And this could be for your camping, whatever it may be. Um, but this definitely is one that I bought that I cannot wait to fill just because it's so big, it has so many pockets. Straps are comfortable, it sits up on your chest. Um, I'm a big fan of the chest strap. 
Um, and it just, it's great. There you go. So that is going to pretty much wrap up today's segment. Um, I know we were trying, trying to stay within that 30 and yeah, that's okay, 25 ra minute range. For first show, um, that's pretty good. We'd also like yeah. to thank everyone for viewing. Um, stay tuned here. Um, at the end of the video, we're going to actually put up some photos of the uh, three different types of wire saws that we talked about and demoed earlier. Um, we demoed the cheaper one out of the three, but we're going to put pictures up of all three, a screenshot where we found them at. Um, once again, you know, check us out. We have a Facebook page. It's called Bug Out Central Florida. We do have a Facebook page called Bug Out Central Florida. We also now have our own uh, independent page for Bear Claw Survival that I made this morning uh, that you guys can go like. Um, and at some point, what we'd like to do is, you know, we were talking yesterday about getting people together to share these ideas and share these experiences with what we have going on. And um, mm -hmm. that page is going to be posted a lot of the comments um, that we're going to follow and look for um, along with events or excursions that we're going to be doing. Because like I said, here in the next couple of months, when we get enough people, we really want to get a group of guys that want to go out or girls, whoever, um, whatever you guys are into um, to go out and really put your bags to the test yep. um, to see what they are capable of. Um, but we are on YouTube, so go subscribe, give us a like, yes, give please. us a follow. Like and subscribe um, us, please. YouTube, YouTube, Facebook, Podcast City Network. Um, I'm sure we'll have other platforms coming Probably soon. Probably search one YouTube, Bear Claw Survival. Yes, exactly. Right. And it will come up in Podcast see City Network. This um, lovely face. PodcastCity.net, which is the home website of Podcast City Network. They have multiple podcast shows on there, ranging everything from wrestling, movies, politics, everything you could think of. Um, and we're on there as well, so make sure you go check out the website. But remember just to give us that like and that subscribe here on YouTube, follow us. Um, we're going to have a lot of good videos up here in the future. Have some guests on here to talk about their experiences, different stuff that they do. Um, we're going to have some on-site location videos in various like areas, wooded, non-wooded, whatever we can think of. So thank cool. you for tuning in, and catch us uh, two weeks here on Wednesday for the second episode of Bear Claw Survival.